So in this video, we're going to be looking at trying to bypass some filters and blacklists for command injection. A lot of times people put a lot of effort into bypassing a cross-site scripting filter, but there are a lot more severe vulnerabilities that people just ignore bypassing filters and blacklists. And one of those is command injection. A lot of times people will just put in a pipe or a semicolon and if it is blacklist and they just move on. But I'm going to show you kind of just a few really quick tips. We'll try and keep this video short on bypassing some filters. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So here we are on Try Hack Me. I went ahead and used Try Hack Me because it's really easy to get to and everybody can find this really simply. You just go to learn after you sign in. And then you'll go to search, type in command injection, and we'll just use this first one right here. It does not have any blacklists or filters, but we're going to pretend that it does so that we can practice our command injection. So if we scroll down here to where we see these little green lines, then we can launch our machine. And this can take a minute, and I did not pre-launch the machine, so I will bring you back once it is up and going. Okay, so it looks like it is ready. We can click the little copy tab, open up a new tab, and hit this, and hopefully it is up and going. It is, and we are brought to this page. So pretty simple way to check command injection is just add in a semicolon and I ID, or it looks like I actually had a typo, so we'll try this again and hit enter, and we get back the WW data it's telling us who we are. So let's go ahead and catch this in burp, and then we will play around with it. So we will turn our proxy on, run the ID command, and we'll send this to a repeater, and we'll turn that off. So now if we send this and we scroll all the way to the bottom, it tells us we are WW data. So now we have this right here. Let's go ahead and un URL encode that so we can send it. We'll get the same thing back here as our ID. But let's pretend that this semicolon was blacklisted. Typically what you're gonna see other people run here also is just a pipe and they will send this and you will get this WW data as well. So you have the pipe, the semicolon, and I believe the and sign right here, you can run it, but this is just gonna view this as another parameter, so nothing's gonna happen. So we have usually those as our options, and let's say they're all blacklisted. You can actually try a backslash in, which is a, another one that often gets overlooked. We'll put a plus sign in there, so that way we have a space and it doesn't seem to want to work for us. We can also try to encode this, and I believe the encoding is uh, percent zero %0a, and we can send this, and we get back who we are. So this encoding right here is something that I think a lot of people overlook. You can actually use encoding for the backslash, which it actually was when we very first sent this over. You have this encoding right here, which was for the semicolon. So we can come back up here to our backslash in right here. And let's say that we wanted, we needed to be able to execute something on the server. So let's say we wanted to run, let's run ls like we have here. And we have the index.php. Let's say we needed to read this file right here in order to get code execution. And we type in cat and then we have this plus and then we have index. Actually, let's do test.php, test.php. And if we run this, I believe it'll work for us. Yeah, right here is what's inside the file. So you actually see this get request right here. And I don't know if I've ever seen a get request that has a command injection in it. Usually it's in a post request because you're not executing code with a get request. Usually you're getting something. Um, but that is neither here nor there. Anyway, this is what's inside test.php. So sometimes you'll have like cat, like this would be a blacklisted. So you wouldn't be able to run who am I, ID, cat, ls, or a lot of other basic commands. I believe that you can just put in some quotes like this and run this to obfuscate the word cat and it still works for us. I think you can also run double quotes in here and get the same output. And just like you would with cross-site scripting, if you didn't want to do that, um, you can try like the capital A and put it in quotes. It actually doesn't. So let's see if we put in our single quotes and run that. We might be able to get that to work. Nope, it does not. It actually gives us just this right here. So you can play around with those kind of like you would with cross-site scripting. But another thing I wanted to show you is sometimes the space right here is going to be blacklisted as well. And so what do you do when the space is blacklisted? Well, you can run, I think it's percent zero nine, And I think that is a space. Let's find out. Um, yeah, that works as a space as well. And if the space is blacklisted, so this percent zero nine, you can run 
Um, I think it's a tab, and I think this goes inside curly braces like this, and I think this is a tab. So we can run this and scroll down, and it works as well. Because if we don't have anything in here and we just say cat test, it's gonna run that all as one word, and it's just gonna print the command right here. So you gotta have a space. So sometimes you will see something like that, but we can put this plus back in here, and you're gonna have test.php. And just like with directory traversal, like the dot dot slash, if we wanted to go back and look at the file that came before, and we wanted to just ls, you might have to change the way you would put in this dot dot slash. So right here we get HTML is the file. So it's probably var www HTML. We could actually just run a pwd and see the directory we're in. So we have var www HTML. So there you go. So with these command injections, really I just wanted to make this video to help you start to think outside the box. And just because you run into a problem, it doesn't mean that it's not vulnerable. Maybe you just need to think a little bit different. So a lot of times people will see cross-site scripting and they'll be like, oh, this is cross-site scripting, we can surely figure out how to bypass all the filters. But when it comes to something else a little bit different that maybe they haven't hunted for as much like a command injection, they'll have some kind of filters and people will just automatically think that it is not vulnerable rather than try to bypass the filters. So I just wanted to make this short little video to let you know things aren't always what they seem and there's almost always a way around the filtering. So if you have any great resources for bypassing filters, please let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.